Hey everyone, Sean here from Tesla Family. I've had my Tesla solar panels here for two years now, and nine months ago, I also added a Tesla Powerwall. My panels and my Powerwall have since powered my home and my Tesla Model 3, while also ensuring my home stays powered during a grid outage. Hopefully, you saw my complete Tesla Solar one-year review video already, because in this video, I'll be sharing my two-year solar performance numbers and how adding a power wall has increased how much my home can self-power itself. You'll see performance data for this second year since installation and how it compares to the first year for solar generation, home usage, net grid usage, total power wall discharge, solar offset, my percent self-powered, my lifetime production, how many SRECs I've sold, and my utility costs for this past year. And yes, I'm still saving over $1,000 with solar. Let's dive in. If you're really interested in Tesla Solar and Powerwall, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and check out my Tesla Solar and Powerwall playlist. I've got videos on here that cover everything from my solar roof estimate, how to order Tesla solar panels, seasonal solar production videos, information on SREX, winter performance, how to clean solar panels, and Powerwall. For those new to the channel or returning subscribers who are unsure of where I'm from, I live here in Central Maryland, just northwest of Washington, D.C. For those new to the channel, welcome. I have a 24 panel, 7.56 kilowatt solar system installed by Tesla in June of 2020. You can see here the diagram on the right hand side of my panel layout. This is Tesla's old medium system size. They used to offer system sizes in small, medium, large, or extra large, but here in 2022 that has since changed and plugging my address into the Tesla solar panel page on tesla.com, we can see Tesla is now recommending a 9.6 kilowatt solar panel system. That would give me a 114% energy offset. You can order panels now in 2.4 kilowatt increments. So dropping it back to one, this is closest to my current panel size, 7.2 kilowatt. We can see that that only offsets my energy by 85% meaning I'll generate less energy than I currently use. Stick around for the video and you'll see why Tesla is recommending the larger panel size now. And if you are considering ordering Tesla solar roof or solar panels, use my referral link and you'll earn a $300 award after your system is activated. All right, guys, diving into the numbers here for my Tesla solar two-year performance video. The time frame of this video is going to be from July 2021 to June 2022 and we can see that here on the left hand side these are two captures from both of those years from my tesla app but i've got my year two highlighted with a green box around it and what's really cool is we can see how uh, the solar energy collected by my panels changes throughout the year obviously highest in the summertime starting with july on the left the lowest generation occurs in the winter time in December and January, and then come climbing back up through the spring and into the summer. So for the time period, my solar panels generated 9,168 kilowatt hours. And between my year two and my year one generation, there was an increase of 36 kilowatt hours, which is just over about a day's of production. We'll get down into average production a little bit lower. My highest production date was April 28th of 2022, where I finally generated over 50 kilowatt hours. It really took almost two years for me to reach that amount, and I was super excited to eclipse that 50 kilowatt hour per day amount with my 7.56 kilowatt Tesla solar panel system. Here is a tweet that I sent on my Twitter page. Uh, just a plug for that, uh, if you are on Twitter, make sure you follow Tesla Family Chan. That's where I send out tweets, a lot of them related to my Tesla YouTube channel. Look at this awesome solar curve, though, on that day. Uh, nearly a perfect uh, bell curve capturing the 50.8 kilowatt hours. 
On year one, my highest production was 49 kilowatt hours, and that came in on May 1st. So, so the pattern here over the first two years of ownership is that my highest production will come sometime in late April or early May, uh, just before the humidity really peaks here in central Maryland. Lowest production day was this past January and this past March where I didn't have any production on January 3rd or March 12th. And that's because we had some snow on the panels. We had four to six inches of snow on the panels here on January 3rd. Obviously the cloud cover and the snow keeps any sunlight from reaching the panels here. And additionally on March 12th, while we didn't have so much snow, we did have between a half and one inch of snow and some ice pellets or sleet on the panels. Also another zero production day there. Uh, in year one of ownership, I had a four and a half inch snowfall and also a zero production day there. So you can pretty much expect to not have any production uh, for a day if you have a significant snow cover on the panels. Average production per day was 25.1 in year two, and that's an increase of 0 0.1 or 100 watt hours per day. And that's still running right near my 2019 average usage. And that, that's the average usage that I measured before I added solar panels to my home. And uh, I did also have an EV at that time. So there wasn't an additional change there with the EV. All right, more cool graphs. Let's jump into home usage. So how much energy did my home use in year two? 10,523 kilowatt hours. And that was an increase of 2354 kilowatt hours. That's quite a jump, almost 25% of an increase. And really thinking back, the only thing that would lead to that increase is the fact that we started to do a lot more driving coming out of the pandemic here in uh, late 21 and early 22. Um, whereas opposed to my year one, we were firmly in the pandemic uh, from uh, late 2020 to early 2021 so um, a lot of teleworking and and my daughter wasn't in school and now i have uh, my daughter's going to school so we're driving her to school uh, much more miles there added to the car so we're doing a lot more charging really that's why i think we're getting extra home usage net grid usage 1627 kilowatt hours and really what that is that is the difference in how much I've drawn from the grid versus how much I've pushed back into the grid. Remember with net metering here in Maryland, any extra energy that's produced by my solar panels, I push back into the grid for a credit and then I can use that at a later time. Well, in this second year, we ended up uh, using an overage of 1,627 kilowatt hours, which was an increase of 2,559. That means that year one, yes, check out the video, we had a negative net grid usage for that first year. Total power wall energy discharge. I added a power wall in late September of 2021. So about nine months here, we've discharged 1,778 kilowatt hours and there's uh, no data to uh, look back on year one because I didn't have power wall at that time. And the solar offset for my home was 87 percent what solar offset that's how much solar i produce versus how much my home uses times 100 so my solar offset would really like to see that number at 100 or above in fact in year one i had 112 percent offset um, so that is a decrease of 25 percent solar offset from year to, year one to year two uh, and just, again, that's attributed to the extra usage there, but likely because we started to do a lot more driving. Looking at these charts on the left-hand side, we can see the traces of my home usage on the top. The blue is my year two, and the orange is my year one. So my home usage right across the board there is above every single month through that period. And looking at the net grid usage is the lower graph. We can see also my net grid usage is above for year two versus year one. These negative values in net grid usage, that's where I've overproduced energy and ended up with a negative value, a negative usage for the month, basically ending up ending the month with credits in the bank. 
and as we get into the colder months, obviously we're not banking any, we're using all of the solar energy we produce and then having to draw from the grid. So you can see that's where the numbers go above zero and then back right even in the spring. Uh, so February into March, we start to over produce what we need for that those individual months in the spring and summer. All right, let's look at self-powered. So uh, my self-powered percentage for my solar and my power wall, basically how much percentage of my energy needs are covered by my home without even needing to be connected to the grid. I am connected to the grid, but if not, 47% uh, of my home's usage is covered right by my panels and my power wall. That is an increase of 16% from year one, and that's because I added that power wall in October of 2021. The percentage of self-powered from just from solar is 30%, so no change there. And the power wall percentage of the self-powered uh, for the nine months is 17%. What happens here is the energy that's collected by the panels goes into powering my home. Any extra there is first sent in to charge my power wall. Once my power wall is charged up, it goes out to the grid for a credit. And a 53% grid powered percentage for year two, which is a drop, which is great. So using less grid energy uh, from year one to year two of 17%. That's attributed to that power wall. So it would be nice to add another power wall, um, and we could probably bring that grid percentage down and increase my. Uh, self-powered percentage okay looking at the charts on the left here on the top we've got my year one versus my year two solar offset and we can see here that my solar offset for year one was slightly higher than my year two and that's mainly because i used a lot more energy in my home between year one and year two and definitely in the spring of uh, 2021 Right here we see this highest peak of orange offset we produced nearly twice as much solar as what we used during that time frame in the lower left this is my percent energy demand per month for year two we could see my self-powered for power wall uh, during the summer of last year was zero because i didn't have the power wall installed and then after it was installed we went up to uh, 20 percent for the month of October, and then went went down 10% for November and December. That's because I was kind of experimenting with what percentage I wanted to use for reserve uh, between 20 and 10% of the total charge of the power wall, trying to decide what worked best. I ended up settling on 20%, and then you can see that climbs through the winter, settling out right around 25 to 30% for the winter into this summer. So the self-power number for a full year would likely be higher than uh, just a 17%. We'll see what it looks like next year. Looking at the grid demand, obviously before power wall, it was much higher, 60 to 70%, even um, from the summer and then into October and December. And then as we added the power wall through last winter and then into this spring, it really started to come down to around just below the 40% mark. And then my self-powered percentage for solar, just kind of averaging between uh, 25 and 35% through most of the year. What's really neat is looking at March of this year through this summer, we see the energy demand clustered right around the 30% mark, meaning that we have equal parts of my home's energy demand supplied by power wall, grid, and solar. And final slide here, let's talk about my total lifetime production, 18,000 kilowatt hours, 18,300 or 18.3 18 megawatt hours. And that's an increase obviously for from year one to year two of 9,168, what we produced in year two. The estimate that Tesla gave us when we ordered our panels was 10,445 over the year still haven't hit that we're still short by about a megawatt hour um not sure if we'll ever actually hit that number uh just uh that might may have been an overestimation by by tesla there but uh we're close and I'm, I'm happy with that in fact it's nice to see that we did increase our generation solar generation from year two to year one
total SREX created. Uh, nine more SREX created here in year two. I generated nine in year one as well. The total sales, $559.50. And that's back in my pocket here from selling an SREX. If you're not sure what an SREX is, take a look at the link above where I explain SREX and how um, I was able to create and sell my own SREX here with my solar. That brings my lifetime total of SREX sales up to $1,184 back in my pocket. And that's way higher, almost triple or more, yeah. Almost triple of what Tesla offered me to buy my SREX outright when I uh, ordered my panels in 2020. We had definitely had to do some extra work here to uh, work these SREX sales, but it's paid off. The total of the nine SREX sales here for year two actually came down from year one. Why did that happen? Let's show you here. This is a, a snip from SREX Trade, the website showing the Maryland State Alternative Compliance Payment here for, for every year starting in 19 going to 2027. 20, you see that alternate compliance payment coming down. Basically, as that comes down, so does the value of an SREC. Check out the SREC video again for more information on SRECs. And my utility bill for 12 months with solar, $215 for year two, which is an increase of $158 from year one. And that's again attributed to that extra uh, energy that we've been using, most likely to, to charge the car. But my 2019 energy costs were $1,232. So I am still saving over $1,000, $1,017. I have installed solar panels on my roof. And the graphs here on the left, the top one is my SREC revenue, starting with uh, the fall of 2020. We can see that my revenue was around $70. I think it was $70.50 per SREC, and I sold uh, more than a year's worth of those right around that price, um, sometimes settling down to around $68 mark before falling right here in this past spring. And that's where, where we see that alternative compliance payment kicking into effect for the year of 2022. Um, the price falling from around the $70 mark to the $50 mark. And taking a look at my electric bill chart here on the lower left, we can see that my energy costs are highest in December and January. Obviously, we're uh, the sun's low in the sky. We're not producing as much solar energy with the panels. But the energy bill across the board, all the other months, is really cheap, generally less than $10. For eight months a year, I am either producing enough solar to meet my energy needs or overproducing, which is why I have such a low bill for most of the year. The cost to just be connected to the grid is right around $8.50 per month, and that's generally what my bill total is. In the summer of 21, I had some credits that the utility provided me for having an efficient home. So that's why I had a credit to my bill. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you really enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to Tesla Family Channel here on YouTube. We really appreciate all of our subscribers and everyone who watches our videos. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you soon. Check out all of our other videos as well. Also, follow us on Twitter at Tesla Family Chan. Use my referral code to buy Tesla solar roof or solar panels. You'll get a reward after system activation.